Welcome back to Bollyfall's Origins, where we shed light on the little known and often bizarre happenings behind the scenes of your favourite movies. Today's episode features one of the greatest Indian movies of all time, Lagarde. A film that combines two of India's most favourite subjects, cricket and cinema. A movie every Indian is proud of and redefines cinematic boundaries in our country. So get ready for a journey down memory lane. The casting in this movie was very precise. Ashutosh Gwadakar wanted Abhishek Bachchan for Bhuvan's role, but Abhishek chose J.P. Dutta's Refugee to make his debut. However, Amir was finally selected for the role as he knew about the initial idea which dated back to 1996. Several of Amir's previous co-stars Sonali Bendre, Rani Mukherjee and Nanita Das were considered, but Gracie Singh finally bagged the role mainly due to her dancing skills and resemblance to Vijaya Tamala, a veteran Indian actress known for her village belle roles in classics like Nayadore. Rachel Shelley and Paul Blackmore were cast as Elizabeth Russell and Captain Andrew Russell, the antagonist. Supporting actors were cast in such a way that it looked as if the roles were tailor-made for them. Several prominent actors, Suhasini Mulai, Kubishan Kabanda, Raghuveer Yadav and Pradeep Rawat had starred alongside Amir in Earth and Safarosh respectively. They were cast by Amir on the basis of their previous performances in those movies. Aditya Lakia as Kachra, the untouchable, was cast as he had a personal association with Ashutosh in Kabihan Kabina and Behla Nasha. He read the book Everybody Loves a Good Drought by P. Sajnat to better understand them and portray the character. Amin Haji was cast as Bhagga, the mute drummer. Haji earlier worked in a film with Ashutosh. The friendly association brought Ashutosh to him with a script, which he liked, and thereafter he successfully auditioned for the role. His knowledge of mute people and some assistance from a music band helped him better prepare for his role. Ashutosh believed that Amin was like Sylvester Stallone and would refer to him as Stallone during filming. The rest of the actors, like Daya Shankar Bande and Yashpal Sharma, were also cast on the basis of their performances in Gulam and Samar. Amitabh Bachchan, known for his baritone, was chosen as the narrator. A.K. Hangal, famous for his older roles, was cast as Shambhukaka. Even after signing Amir Khan, Ashutosh was unable to find a producer who gave him creative freedom and a lenient budget. Finally, Amir decided to produce it under his own Amir Khan Productions banner as its first film. It was shot in Kanurja near Burj in Gujarat as the makers felt the village was dry and devoid of facilities, which will help them to depict the fictional village with more authenticity. Banu Ataya, the first Oscar winner from India for Gandhi, was selected as the costume designer. The dialogue is a combination of three dialects, Avadi, Bojpuri, Raj Bashar, penned by K.P. Saxena. Pre-planning was conducted for a year, including 10 months for production issues and two months for character prepping. As a first-time producer, he obtained a crew of about 300 people for six months. Due to the lack of comfortable hotels in Bourges, he hired a newly constructed apartment and furnished it completely for the crew. Security was set up and a special housekeeping team was brought in to take care of the crew's needs. Most of the 19th century tools and equipment depicted in the film were lent to the crew by local villagers. Initially they did not want to part with their equipment, but after much coaxing they gave in. Then they travelled to different parts of the country to collect the musical instruments to use in that day and in that era. During the shooting, Ashutosh suffered from a slipped disc and had to rest for 30 days. During this period, he had his bed next to a monitor and continued with his work. The filming schedule spanned the winter and the summer, commencing in early January and finishing in mid-June. This was physically challenging for many, with the temperature ranging from zero all the way up to 50 degrees Celsius. The actors had to drink frequently and sit in the shade. The schedule was strict. The day began at 6am, changing into costumes and getting onto the actors' bus, which took them to all the sets in Kanuria. The actors, including Amir, all travelled on the same bus. If anyone had missed it, it was up to them to reach the sets. One day, Amir was late and missed the actors' bus. That day, his wife Rina, the executive producer, reprimanded him for being late. She told him he had to set an example for the rest of the crew. While on the sets, the actors were all given call sheets with the day's timetable, such as breakfast, hairstyling, makeup, costumes, 
and so on. Suhasini Mulai stands on a barren piece of land somewhere in Burj Gujarat and looks up at the scorching sun. She's dressed in a white sari and has squinted her eyes as the sun shines mercilessly upon the arid landscape. A few feet above her, cinematographer Anil Mehta sits on a giant crane with a movie camera aimed directly at Mulai. From behind a monitor, Ashutosh says, OK, into a microphone and is greeted with a round of applause. This is pretty much how it all began, at around 11am, January 6th, the year 2000, a shooting of what would become one of the greatest films in Indian cinema. Lagan was not a typical Indian movie. Who makes a movie or stars in a movie that is 3 hours and 45 minutes long? The Indian moviegoers did not expect such a runtime. The last movie that was this long was Raj Kapoor's Mera Naam Jokar, which flopped. Nevertheless, Logan had a 90-minute cricket match which made all the difference. The cricket madness has always been at a peak in India. The beautifully shot climax that made viewers believe they were watching a cricket match which had a great amount of importance. They felt Bhuvan was Sachin and the Team India was to win at all costs. The celebration at the theatres after Bhuvan's team won resembled the scenes when India wins a cricket match. It showed everything about the game of cricket. Even the people who did not know about cricket could learn the rules, regulations and kit making from the movie. The social commentary in this movie covered everything from caste division to India's devotion to gods and the coming together of all religions. Gaddar brought out patriotism by indo pak conflict and Lagan did it by indo brick conflict. Both of the movies ended by achieving the desired verdict. Pakistanis and Indians make up and the Indians defeat the British regime. But Lagan actually created tension before culmination. Everybody was biting nails at the theatre as if it was a live cricket match, whereas Godard was a typical masala movie that won hearts and created huge box office records, Lagan garnered critical acclaim and earned an Oscar nomination for the best foreign language film. Now, for the first time, the Indian media and public believed that an Indian movie could triumph on the big stage. Mother India and Salam Bombay were the only two other Indian movies to make the final nomination list. Some foreign reviewers and critics walked out of screenings, but some stayed back to watch a masterpiece. Amir Khan generated widespread publicity for the movie. He literally wanted to show Lagan to everyone, everyone including distributors, theatre hall owners, who all arranged special screenings as a form of prayer, wanted Lagan to bring home the much elusive Oscar for an Indian movie. Special screens were arranged at various places, including Amir's office, where the rest of the cast assembled to watch the award ceremony. But when the time came, Lagan lost to a Bosnian movie, and tears rolled down the crew's eyes. Many felt the nomination was a huge victory, but some felt Lagan was overlooked by the Academy. They felt Lagan was a complete film. It had songs and dances, great storyline, acting, and a tense climax. For some, it was the perfect mixture of Western and Indian brands of cinema. They expected it to win, but were left disappointed. And this moral victory started a new era of Indian cinema, where we believe our movies can be a worldwide phenomenon. Even after all these years, the cast members still refer to each other by their character names. Recording the reaction of thousands of people isn't easy, so how did Ashutosh manage to elicit the perfect reaction from a crowd during the final scene? He made Amir sing Atiya Kya Kandala, which got the crowd to cheer, making for the perfect scene. Sachin Tendulkar had the most interesting reaction whilst watching Lagan. At a preview screening, Amir recalls seeing Sachin look tense during the final match. Isn't that a feeling we've all experienced whilst watching Sachin on the field? The building in which the Lagan team stayed for over six months was completely destroyed in January 26, 2001 in the Burj earthquake. So that's it for today's episode of Bolly Falls Origins. Thank you for joining us as we explored the masterpiece that was Lagan. If you like this video, click the like button below 
Don't forget to comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you next time for another episode of Bollyfall's Origins. <laughs>